This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. My next guest has become one of the UK's most treasured and successful comedians. Alan Carr has hosted 16 series of his BAFTA award-winning Channel 4 chat show, Alan Carr, Chatty Man, and his most recent TV appearance as the host of Interior Design Matters. Oh, I love that show, but it does make me feel like my house is needing a good makeover. He also has multiple sellout tours under his belt, and I'm delighted to say that Alan Carr is touring the country once again, four years on from his last tour, and with a global pandemic thrown in he's back on the road again with regional trinket a show about finding happiness and joy in the small things and i'm very pleased to say that the lovely alan carr joins me now to tell us all about the show hello alan hello how are you i'm very well how are you i know what the secret song is <gasps> don't tell can us I enter? can i enter yes get texting in alan get texting right now 80295 I don't, I don't think i could wait till after the news i want to know now <laughs> i want to know if i'm right <laughs> oh you will be right i'm sure you will now alan i believe you have taken time out of your lunch break to chat to us have you put your sandwich down are you right in the middle of filming Oh, yes, I'm doing a new series of interior design masters. And I don't know if you've, you, know, you said you're a fan of the show, but oh, I mean, we, we, ha- we always have to send someone home. And we've just sent someone home. So we're all a bit sad because it's like one big assy family here. And I oh. just, I don't like it. And I go, oh, I hate any kind of confrontation. So we're all a little bit subdued. But you know what? I'm really happy that I'm talking to you. So you're really picking me up. Thank you, love. Oh, thank you, Alan. You're so sweet. Um, and are you enjoying being back on stage performing comedy after lockdown? Like, have you noticed anything different to live performance in the new normal? Oh, everyone is just up for a giggle. And last year I hosted the Royal Variety performance and I've been on the stage there performing on it a few times. It can be a little bit stuffy. You know, everyone's got a monocle and a cover band and a top hat (laughs) and they're all quite serious. But as soon as I stepped on stage, everyone went crazy and was like, let's have a party. That's what my... That's what my tours are like. I go on stage and everyone's just up for laughs. They are so sick of talking about COVID. No one wants to talk about lockdown. Let's all have a laugh. And oh. so that's what's happening, really. So, yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. Oh, good. So we're getting away from the COVID and just into the laughs. And, Alan, you'll know this. We here in Edinburgh, we're hurtling towards August and the Fringe. And I know that you've played the Fringe many, many times. Now, do you have a favourite memory of the Fringe that's radio-friendly? <laughs> oh, radio-friendly. Now, that is a... <laughs> 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 I, you know what I love? Listen, I love the fringe. My liver doesn't. But I've, I've had... Do you, know, do you know a really lovely thing about the fringe? is Because everyone's in there together. And I remember doing my first ever show in 2001. And then there was a knock on the door. And someone said, oh, someone wants to come and see you. They've just seen the show. And I was like, who? Peter Kay comes in. Now we all know how amazing he is. And he'd actually sneaked in and seen the show because he was a big fan of me. And I mean, I was like, you know, even know who I am. <laughs> so um, you get lovely, you get lovely times like that where you get performers coming along and then you all have a drink with some amazing names. I loved The Fringe. I had so many lovely memories. And of course, in 2005, that's where I got spotted by Channel 4 who then gave me Friday Night Project and that's then it. Catty Man. So you never yeah, know who's I, in the audience. You never know. That's it, and that's the joy of the whole thing. Oh, one of my favourites is uh, actually watching you in a late night show in Espionage, Alan, a very, very long time ago. Oh, Espionage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. oh no! <laughs> was, was I sober? Uh, mm, let's leave that. <laughs> now, can you tell me a wee bit about Regional Trinket? What can the audiences expect from this new show? Yeah, well, listen, it's very, it's a really odd, odd thing for me because I wrote the show, and then it, two weeks before it's about to go on, this thing called COVID came along. Oh. Boo hiss. <laughs> and then so it got cancelled like everything else did. And then when I come back, I don't know if you know or read in the papers, but my, uh, my marriage broke down and we're now divorced. So I was stuck with a... Um, and because the show's all about my... Ma- you know, um, Adele famously married us and it was all about my wedding. And he's a farmer and how I ended up on a farm during lockdown. Yeah. But then when I came out the other side of lockdown, a lot of things had changed. <laughs> 
And normally I like to write the show and leave it, but I was actually writing it on the hoof. And it's very raw, it's very personal, and it's very anecdotal. And, um, yeah, it's basically about a marriage breaking down, but which sounds really depressing, but it's some of my best comedy. I really... It's had so many great reviews and everything, and that's why I'm coming back up to Scotland, because it was sold out. This is the second time I'm coming up to Scotland, because uh, the first one sold out, so... Um, Oh, we're yeah, delighted I, so to have it's you. It's really personal, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's fresh because it's new stuff and I'm going through it. It's my kind of therapy, really. Absolutely. So like through the writing performance and the, and, uh, the writing process and the performance, because you're saying it's quite a personal tour. And do you think because you are a comedian, it's a bit easier to try and laugh through the struggles of, of lockdown and all these personal things that have been going on, have been going on for you as well? Yeah, well, I'm quite tight, you think, so I don't really want to pay for therapy, so I put a tour in. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, it, it is, and a lot of people contacted me and said, oh, are well, you going to cancel the show tonight? Are you going to do it? And I said, no way, no way, because I go on there. It's such an uplifting show. It really helps me out. And listen, I'm not going to lie. When If anyone goes through a divorce and then we have the you know, the hell of lockdown, being trapped in there. Mm-hmm. I want to laugh when I go on that stage. And I was speaking to another comedian, and I was saying, yeah, I thought it was actually John Bishop, you know, and I was yeah. saying, uh, you moan about when you're in lockdown, oh, I'm so bored, trapped indoors. So when you get this opportunity to get on stage, you just want to do it, you know what I mean? Let's have some fun. Absolutely, grab it with both hands. Yeah. <laughs> and do you feel you've changed as a performer in the four years since your last tour? Yeah, I do think I have changed. Um, like the material's a bit brave. It's very personal. And I would never normally be this personal about my life. But mm-hmm. um, I just feel I owe it to the audience and to me. And, you know, you get more and more confident. And I, just being able to go on stage, you know, after what we've been through, just gives you an extra zest for life. You know, you just want to put on the best show you can. Because I remember sitting there in deep and darkest lockdown saying, oh, Alan, you treat yourself to another jigsaw. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I've been so bored. But honestly, you're going to get such a good show because I'm just gagging to get out there. Oh, it sounds absolutely brilliant. And listen, you're heading to Dundee on the 7th of July and I believe you're going to be on the lookout for a shoe thief. Can you tell us what that's all about? Oh, it was so funny. I played Dundee on the last tour. I had an absolute scream. And there I am at stage door signing autographs. <laughs> and I can feel me, me leg giving way. I thought, oh, Alan, what's up with this? Because I do have trouble with me hip because years of mincing has ground it down and it just <laughs> suddenly goes. So I could feel something pulling on it. I looked down. There's a woman on her hands and knees trying to steal my shoe while her friend was distracting me with an autograph. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> she said, oh... I want a souvenir hand like this. So she's going to steal my shoe. So I don't know what I'm going to... I might have to wear my Crocs. <laughs> and if they can just whip them off rather than undoing the shoe. <laughs> but, yeah. And, I, and I, I didn't know who it was. I just saw a dark head down as I went down there. Dark hair. And I wonder whether it was Lorraine. <laughs> Lorraine stealing your shoes. Was it a nice shoe? Was it a trainer? What do we have? Was it a wee loafer? What was going on? It was a wee loaf of love. So it all she had to do was just yank the bottom off and to be off with it. But listen, <laughs> I'm going to gaffer tape me crocs to me feet this time. No one's getting it. Do you hear that, Dundee? No shoe thieving <laughs> on the 7th of July. Now, you've been busy filming in Italy for a new series with your good pal Amanda Holden. Let's let's hear a wee bit about that. What are you doing in Italy? Well, it's, um, it's a brand new show that me and Amanda came up with. Now, I don't know if you read in the paper... There's these houses that are for a euro because a lot of these older towns in Sicily, all the young people are leaving. And where this 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 is such a sad story. They had a natural um, disaster there and everyone fled. And these houses are so beautiful and they're so run down. So um, me, I bought one for euro and Amanda bought one for euro and we're doing them up. And then, obviously, at the end, they were going to sell them for charity and raise some money, you know, either for here in the UK or in Sicily. And so, yeah, it's just so fun working with Amanda. I love her. But you know what? You know what gets really on my nerves? What's happening? She still looks amazing in a jumpsuit and a hard hat. I mean, I'm sweating. It's 40. Because we turn up there, and it's like... um, 
um, we turned up there, and, and there, there was uh, squatters are in there. And I won't tell you what was smeared up the wall, Ooh. and there was mattresses, and the toilet had been destroyed. And I said to the producer, I said, "Well, when's the stunt doubles turning up to move all this rubbish?" They said, "No, you're doing it." I was walking up and down this hill, me and Amanda. Oh, and it's uh, honestly, I know you lot of people think celebrities don't do any hard work, <laughs> but you wait till you see this. Oh, uh, it's like having a proper job, love. I cannot wait. I'm getting visions of you, Annika, racing in a full-on jumpsuit up and down <laughs> Italy. <laughs> That's just what it's like. And she, oh, I, do you know what? A hard hat and still toe cap boots do not suit me. Oh, listen, I'd Alan, like you see suit everything. From, I'd like to see someone from Dundee try and take these steel toe cap boots off. <laughs> Can you tell us about what else you're up to? What you, else am I up to? Are you going to have time to nip and see us at the Edinburgh Fringe this year? Yeah, I would like to go and see that. I'm coming up, to, um, like I said, I'm playing the playoffs, but I'm coming up to do a secret gig up there at some point. So uh, keep an eye up on my Instagram for that. And I'm also doing my epic game show. We're bringing back Strike It Lucky tomorrow and oh, Charles Play. And I'm bringing them all back. Play your cards right. I just love it. It's so nice. And, uh, yes, that's all, I'm, I'm, that's all I'm doing. I'm doing loads. You're doing tons, pal. That sounds absolutely brilliant. Listen, I am going to let you get back to your sandwich uh, and let you have your lunch. But thank you so much, Alan, for joining me. And uh, Alan will be at the Caird Hall in Dundee with his new show, Regional Trinket, on the 7th of July before he's heading to Edinburgh and then Glasgow. And so for more details, head to the Afternoon Show website. BBC Sounds. Music. Radio. Podcasts.